So we're just going to get right to it. So what does womanhood mean to Anyone you? Anyone want to talk with you? Well, I asked whether feminism should be sort of like the vehicle of the rights of society in general to your womanhood, especially if you identify as a woman, in a way being comfortable in the whole of the depending on what that means to you. So it's very much that in the rule, but in the rule, so it's a measurement as well. So, of course, if you don't have the steps, you don't have the steps. On any level. Spirit and essence around. But I think you also, because. I think, you know, I'd like to think of that as a state of place. So I don't know. To do that, you know, I'm still in Europe. I have that connection. I think that it doesn't matter how. You know, things around like the way you communicate and things like that. It's not going to be every month or something. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think, I think um, we are in a time of world you know, a lot of people in the world don't, are, world don't um, have that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. it's also about yeah. not necessarily yeah. re-educating yeah, women, just say that, men. again, it's a because constant fluid in men is the space that changes on yeah. a so main so basis, in a decade way, basis, weekly basis, that said, I think that there's a wisdom that can be done by women. So we, we've yeah. made the good small and that there's in a way that we collective force, even though in the Western world, but often as you see the in America, America, that can quite this space, which is super powerful to, 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 to use it. it so I think it's not using the same ground again. So uh, yeah. I think um, women. I, I, I just remember being in the is always do other carriers. Well, I think now we. advanced I think feminism is <laughs> so I'm not sure I've lived the majority of my life say, well, I would say it's just, you know, do you own things? It, it's I mean, very, I think when we talk about it, very it's very very interesting because the misogyny, the, the bureaucracy is completely overruled by men, everything, it's, it's incredible and even, even though we think that Society is becoming more progressive in countries like Sri Lanka. Actually, the tendency is to be held back by these ideas that, I mean, you know, when you're a girl, your dad is your work. And then next thing, your husband is your work. And the next thing, your son is your work. Not even your daughter, but your son. Because, you know, it, it's like your your goal in life is to, to kind of um, to support the man. Yeah. so much to be done in just doing it. So, but the whole point of being in an institution is really interesting because then you can try to work from the inside and do something with it. So I think that, um, both sides have a funny ability. We decide to come up against um, subtle aggressions, microaggressions, really obvious aggressions, and, 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 um, and, work, and work out your strategy when you're in it. Because it's happening in the life moment. And I don't always, I'm not always quick enough to work out it's happening. So that is the worst of the matters. Like, it's just a shock. There's very, there's very few women in so that actually yeah, makes me in Sri Lanka, in India, yeah. so like where <laughs> you know it's kind of facilitated for them. I think it's kind of that's I mean, that potentially like some a place where I think I would even um, you know I mean I'd be like taking to oh, reach yeah, out to um, so those true. countries and to women around it's the world the case, is kind of just is kind of reminding yourself all the time put that, that in them because they're controlled by these 
to ideas that are then we should be about creating dominating society for years and years to see. Well, I always thought that the issue for confidence issues. So, but it just opened up a Pandora's box. Yeah, worms. So. That's my advice is, you know, so that your, your confidence is self-validation is really important to self-love. Uh, and then on top of Well, last question. Um, very simple and also very big, as ever. Um, which will be the first question later on. Uh, what is femininity to you? Say that. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. I agree. I walked into that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I read that in your email and I thought, I only know what it is. I have to say, do you know what it is? Which is a terrible definition. So everything that we uh, deem lesser is somehow So for me, I think it's about empathy. Most of the help I've received 
have been through women, you know, helping and supporting, uh, guiding, and I think that be prepared to accept the help as well as I think that it's it's kind of part of our world to to be it's not to favour women over men, it's just to be aware that if there's someone who's inquiring and wants the support, give a hand. I just can't yeah. imagine that you would want to shoot a whole group coat in the foot yeah. over I mean I, I have actually um and gone out and asked um, like older women artists, activists to mentor me yeah. in like just like an email. And lots of people actually been really receptive. So it might be something to actually try. I don't think they're not in your sector, they might be in a different sector. But you know, if you see someone just go, hey, I'd really like to have a coffee with you and you know, talk about your achievements because I'll be in my, you know, sort of, you know, hang up a bit if you need to. <laughs> I know Liberty because I'm on the same class as Liberty and she had a crit once for her work yeah. and she got told to put more sewing into your work. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah I, didn't, I didn't think of that. Yeah, um, when, when, you, when you said that and that happened and, and then you mentioned something about consciousness, like consciousness raising, sorry, tongue stuff. Yeah. And um, I think consciousness raising, I think it's Bell Hooks' book which is 
Fantastic. Yeah. And it was also um, the second sex band, Simone de Beauvoir. Two books that should be like in the high school curricula for reading to sort of open minds because at the basis of it all is through primary schools and high schools and also the way that gender is seen through schools. It's it's awful because you go through toy shops. Toy shops is the worst and that's where children begin to learn what's pink, what's blue. You know, and that whole thing, that big divide that comes down. It's it's kind of interesting that um, blue was actually a feminine colour before it got re stereotyped in the twentieth well, so, century. So is the word dude. So, yeah, yeah, so there's there's all these things that they're all sort of really mashed up and it's it's just a mess really because <laughs> you've got you've got to you've got to get on to the beginning of, 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 of parents and their children and, and saying, you know, you can't play with that, that's a girl's toy. It's coming from families yeah. and from nurseries and schools, absolutely like my mum and dad that's in the room with my daughter said and I was like, Oh never say this to tell you this but what you you are saying Represented, we can find out, we can enjoy actually watching a film that is talking about you and you know how you feel, how you feel about that, what's your report with other people, with men, with women, with what are you feeling as a young woman, what's your aspiration, uh, how do you think about yourself, and how do you see yourself represented in the world in, in the kind of way? Because I grew up in um, in Romania, and luckily I grew up in uh, was raised by women, and then I went out in the world, and it was a bit weird. I never found myself, uh, and I was a continu continuous struggle with uh, the authority, right? Male authority, obviously, Eastern Europe. So then coming here, it was like a breath of fresh air. There's still a lot of work to be done here as well, but there's a start, there's a base, there's something that you can build up to. 
so yeah, of course I'm enraged by all the, what is happening now in the uh, in the Arab world, you know, and <coughs> all the atrocities because I'm coming from a place where I actually experienced physically what that means. So um, what can we do? I don't know what can we do. We can just ignore it in terms of we don't have to give it so much power and just do our work. And yes, we, we have to be politically involved. I don't think it's the other way. We have to be politically involved through the arts, through other uh, means, and we've got to, get, got to get to those laws that are you know, changing something for us. And yeah, so so I mean, for inspiring. Uh, um, we need to get to this. Um, because um, we can find it when we teach girls, because I started a master's at the Goldsmiths in Cultural Studies, mm -hmm. and I, I dropped out because I arrived, and it was all like white guys with like horns and glasses, <laughs> and in this entire department. And the um, entire, mm -hmm. it was called, it was an international thing about cultural studies. And what, what was international in this? It was, we went into um, Plato, so we went into sort of, um, sort of formation <coughs> of Western democracy. And then it was like a little tip that of China on the end, because obviously we're seeing China go for this kind of capitalist revolution. And then that was it. There was nothing about anywhere else. And, and I think what I said earlier about having, looking at different ways that we study and that we teach and the sort of very foundation that our society is built on, which is, you know, is, is you know, is set on that Grecian <coughs> mode of thinking. And um, I think that, you know, if you look at um, cultures in, you know, South Asia, East Asia, on the continent, Africa, and there are different structures of society that we can look at as feminists, not in an appropriate and Western way, but definitely to sort of look at for inspiration of how we can really break out of this really deeply embedded patriarchal place that we live in. I mean, for Christ's sake, like the, um, and when I was doing the course, it was incredible. I used to go to the um, British Museum and the very building is designed on a Roman building. So our whole entire kind of culture is really trying to mirror this ancient society, very patriarchal society. And even gender as well, and, and gender binaries, um, people with transition, well, it doesn't really be called a transition gender, it could just be a different gender without any kind of explanation, and that was okay. And then with religion as well, different gods change genders, there's you know, more creative and um, female gods, there's some that are endogenous. So there are all these different things that we can take and look at models exactly that we can sort of bring into our own lives. I think it's something that we need to kind of try and instill. And I would like to think maybe because I do think the whole thing happened in America with Trump, which is a reaction to Obama essentially and um, things that are happening in Britain. We are see, kind of seeing the decline of the West right now, and I think that's why I've got the kind of panic that we're seeing. Maybe that's happening subconsciously, I think, you know, it's happening. And I think in that way, it could be actually quite an exciting time to see these other cultures, you know, becoming quite strong economically, and how that is going to shift how we view things, how we, you know, well, you keep yeah. sorry. Yeah, well, it's question. Go ahead. Um, thank you. I think you've kind of, yeah, it's actually really interesting topic. And I don't know quite how to word this, but I was thinking to all of you, or particularly to Donna, um, I think more like about popular culture and music and how mm -hmm. that impacts how young people young women especially identify with themselves and mm -hmm. more in relation to like, our own desires and sexuality mm -hmm. and understanding of ourselves in that way. And I and then you kind of read a lot of feminist writing on social media things saying that those a lot of those women are empowering themselves mm -hmm. by taking on the male gaze for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I wonder whether that becomes the female gaze or whether we're actually just perpetuating and damaging ourselves in some way. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, so the question is, so um, do you think that, um, can any kind of take on the male gaze and the way that a lot of performers behave like, like sexually, right. um, in the music videos and things like that, and the type of clothing that they're wearing, mm -hmm. is that empowering or is it... Oh, great question. Yeah. Um, we, uh, there's a lot of discussion about that. Like, you know, Beyonce's a big part of that. Yeah. Like, is she wearing enough? Is she, you know, should she cover up? Is it empowering? Uh, I, I never want police what to put women wear, of course. Uh, I dress how I dress. Um, I'm a lesbian, so I'm not for the male gaze. But when I walk out on the street, men think I can put on lipstick for them. So, you know, it kind of becomes, I can say, you know, but I find that to be. Um, subversive, because it's kind of like, well, yeah, you think this is new, but it isn't, kind of, yeah, I'm not going to say that. I went through this whole evening the afternoon without swearing. <laughs> 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 Society is 
still discussing by a body. So whether that actual empowerment is being on a body that we still see being attracted to that male gaze. And I'm gonna just use dogs as an example. Let's very much there's a lot of complicated stuff there. There's a lot of complicated <laughs> stuff there, but it's just because it's you know something that's happened recently. And you know, she does have that body, she does have that figure, she does, you know, I don't know what her figure is like. complete liberation for me but then like I'm 35 years old now but when I meet younger girls they, they think it's like a sort of self-expression almost you know this sort of like polarization of like almost like advertising you know they're taking it on board to sexually liberate themselves I find that really problematic sometimes but I mean I mean it's, it's a very tough argument because you know this is what the advertising and the media is kind of dictating you to do like you know be a Beyonce be a Madonna be a uh, uh, Miley Cyrus, right? So it almost seems like this is like the conventional sort of forms of sexual female liberation. And then, you know, somebody like myself says, well, actually, I, I don't think that's really cool. It's like, oh my gosh, no, 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 you hate women, you know? <laughs> so, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of like, um, and I mean, the thing about the fashion industry and the sort of music industry, there's so many layers to it. You, you know, it's, it's kind of like, if you only get involved in these industries and work in it and you see it under the covers, you kind of see the mess of it, you know, otherwise you're just going to see the pretty pictures that are thinking, oh yes, this is great, this is what women should look like. So I think, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I like to kind of, you know, I don't know, I think it's kind of quite an important conversation. Yeah, I just, um, thanks for that, but it's really important. What you said about um, dressing and images and stuff, I think it's really important to understand that we live in, in a visual image culture now, just because of Tumblr, social media, Instagram, you know, and um, there was this is um, the like a young um, genderqueer feminist collective. Um, I follow one of them on Twitter, on Instagram actually. And you know, sometimes I do look and I'm like, oh, this is a selfie of your lips. Not sure what feminist statement you're making here. You look nice, so I'm gonna like it. And but, um, and then I recently saw them um, them do something with pandas. And I was like, mm, where are those shoes being made? Are they being made by a like, woman in Bangladesh? But where, where's this, what's going on here? And that's why we think we need to get back to really talking about capitalism, how we're going to attack that in feminist spaces. So it doesn't, it's not all just about the external, you know, wearing it, you can, everyone can be free to wear their hair this way or whatever. We know that, but like, in what, what decisions and what are we complicit in when we, when we are doing that? And um, 